Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to share with you 25 common pitfalls when trying to learn to program or trying to master how to program. Many of these points affect both beginners and professionals alike, myself very much included. Since we are programmers, I will start the list at zero. And that zero point is that uh, we often forget that programming is about people. So rather than focusing just on code, try to think about people. The people you're writing the software for and the people you're writing the software with. That kindness, compassion, empathy, whatever you want to call it, that you will extend to the people working with you will also be useful to yourself down the line when you are reviewing the code six months or a year later. Point number one, not spending enough time programming. Unfortunately, programming is the kind of skill that requires practice. So if your job involves some degree of programming, but you're not actually spending enough time programming, it's very hard to become good at it. Point number two is stopping at the surface of whatever you're learning or implementing. Rather than going behind the scenes or digging deeper into a greater amount of information related to the problem or the technologies that you're using, you might be happy enough with just knowing the basics to get things done. And if you do that, it's fine, you'll get by for a while, but you'll never really grow as a programmer. So my suggestion to avoid this pitfall is to dig a little bit deeper, trying to go one level below the surface, trying to understand a little bit more than what is required to get the job done. Pitfall number three is the so-called magpie approach to programming. Magpies are birds that are very much attracted to the shiny new things. And uh, we programmers tend to do the same at times. We see that uh, while we're learning Rails, we'll see Elixir coming out and figure out, oh, that sounds really good. So I'm gonna drop everything and start studying that. And then you'll see that many people are studying React. Okay, so let's drop that and jump on React as well. So what happens is that um, you end up learning a little bit of everything, but never specializing in something. I made a video before about the importance of specializing in something. And it's very hard if you spend most of your time jumping from technology to technology. So you should pick something and then try to stick with it as much as you can. Default number four is being stuck in tutorial hell. Instead of ever creating projects and encountering real problems, you're stuck in this perpetual cycle of reading books and taking tutorials and so on and uh, you gain all this knowledge that remains essentially theoretical because you're doing passive learning but you're not practicing as much as you should with the knowledge that you're acquiring from these courses. Pitfall number five is skipping the fundamentals. So you end up becoming an expert about very advanced topics and then you can't even join two tables because you kind of skipped altogether the topic. So my suggestion to you is to try to nail the basics, try to nail the fundamentals, walk before you run. Pitfall number six is lack of patience. I see it often with new programmers. They want to become really great programmers overnight and that doesn't happen. It doesn't matter how smart you are. You need the time required to learn and practice the skills. Otherwise you'll never develop the kind of programming skills you hope to have or, or wish to acquire uh, so quickly. Take a chill pill. Seriously, take it right now. Stop, pause the video and take the chill pill because you'll never learn if you're so much in a rush. Take your time. Who's rushing you? Take time to process the information that you're acquiring. Take time to practice, do exercises, develop your projects make mistakes it's okay you're not going to become an excellent programmer overnight it's going to take a few years so think long term not short term and have a little bit of patience pitfall number seven is getting so bogged down in the day-to-day -day programming that you need to do perhaps at work that you don't really ever define a map for your learning so you never have kind of an outline of what you want to learn in the future so you're just focused on the, in the moment on the problem that you're trying to solve at work and that's it. You don't have an outline of the steps that you want to take in the future in order to learn certain particular topics or to develop yourself as a programmer or to develop your career as a programmer. Pitfall number eight is analysis paralysis. 
So being stuck in a paradox of choice when it comes to technologies. Instead of spending your time practicing the skills, you spend your time researching videos and tutorials to decide which technology is going to be the best technology for you. So you spend time watching videos about Vue versus React versus Angular, or maybe Ruby versus Python, or C Sharp versus Java. Basically, instead of becoming a programmer, you fantasize about becoming a programmer. You spend all of your time trying to come up with a perfect tool, and there is no silver bullet. There is no perfect tool. You just have to pick one that is good enough and really learn it. Pitfall number nine is refusing the polyglot nature of modern day programming. In most cases, you can't get away with just knowing one programming language, unfortunately. So not to contradict the previous points, but once you learn one specific programming language, you typically will need to learn at least one or two more in order to be well-rounded and able to solve problems with your set of skills. So if you are in the world of web development, for example, you might have one programming language for your back end. You'll have typically JavaScript in the front end. And even though they're not technically programming languages, CSS and HTML as well. Pitfall number 10 is being afraid of getting your hands dirty with new technology. So you hear about chatbots, you hear about blockchain, and instead of firing up a virtual machine and trying them out, you just read about them. You see it as something scary and new that you don't know how to approach. And rather than just say, hey, let's try this thing out, let's see how it works, you just kind of remain a theoretical a scholar on the subject rather than actually someone who practices those skills. Pitfall number 11 is being discouraged and disappointed in yourself because you had to Google the solution rather than come up with it on your own. Googling is something that all programmers do, including professional programmers who work at Google itself. So just because you didn't have the solution, it doesn't mean that you're not a programmer. Modern day programming has a multitude of libraries and resources that need to be glued together. So it's not reasonable to expect you to know all of them, to know all the APIs, to know all the algorithms that you need to solve the problems. It's perfectly okay to Google for them. Pitfall number 12 is not spending time working on small exercises and katas that can refine your fundamentals, your basic skills, of a given technology or programming language. Pitfall number 13 is fear of being judged by other programmers. So never sharing your code with other people, never getting code reviews from more experienced programmers, and essentially just keeping the code to yourself. And that's the easiest way to not grow as a programmer. Pitfall number 14 is related to the previous point, and it's not finding a one-on-one -on -one mentor who can help you develop your skills as a programmer. Pitfall number 15 is related to a previous point and is uh, having a realistic deadline when it comes to learning a particular technology. For example, I want to become an iOS developer in one month. That's not going to happen. You can create some throwaway apps in a month, but you're not going to become an actual experienced, useful, highly paid iOS developer in one month. Pitfall number 16 affects uh, those of you who are trying to learn how to program in order to create apps or businesses on the side. And uh, in that case, you might not develop certain ideas just because they don't have a path to profitability. So in the pursuit of trying to become good at the craft of programming, you should pursue those ideas that are cool, but don't have necessarily a way of making money just for the sake of learning. Pitfall number 17 is not asking questions for fear of being judged or for fear of coming across as stupid. My suggestion is to get over it. Just use your name and ask those questions. But if you don't want to, at least use an anonymous account or a nickname of sort. But ask those questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Pitfall number 18 is what I call the low-level programming envy. Feeling like you're not a real programmer because you're working with high-level programming languages and libraries instead of low-level programming languages like system programming languages such as C or Rust and working on hardcore 
algorithms that uh, you don't really need to work with because you have libraries doing the heavy lifting for you. You're still a programmer. If you're gluing things together, you're still a programmer. As long as you're making programs, you're a programmer. Stop feeling like you're not a programmer just because you're using very high level languages and libraries. If you are making programs, web apps, mobile apps, it doesn't matter, you are a programmer. Pitfall 19 is letting your desire for best practices hinder your ability to program. For example, you might find yourself reading entire books about TDD or BDD before you start working on your own projects. Instead, you should start working on your projects and as you go along, you'll learn more about uh, test-driven development. Pitfall number 20 is perfectionism. So getting stuck in that final touches phase and never shipping anything. Always being like almost done with your project but never delivering it to the world. In order for you to learn and improve your products, you need to ship them. Of course, don't ship horribly broken software, but try to ship as soon as you can your minimum viable product. Pitfall number 21 is related to the previous point, and it's ignoring the iterative nature of making software. So you expect to have that uh, polished perfect product out there, rather than realizing that the best way to do this is you create a first draft, see what works, see what doesn't, and then slowly over time, you add new features or add the refinements and fix bugs that exist. So that's the best approach when you're learning and it's also the best approach when you're actually shipping products. Pitfall number 22 is the so-called imposter syndrome, which is a plague in our uh, industry. People believe that they're not programmers because there are people who are better than them. So stop comparing yourself with others. Just focus on improving yourself. If you are writing programs, you are a programmer. People have this obsession with questioning themselves. Stop doing that. Feeling that you're not good enough is very easy if you have imposter syndrome. And uh, this is particularly insidious if you don't have many role models or representation within the industry. So it is something that affects women and minorities quite a bit. So my suggestion to you is to try to overcome the part of you that says I'm not good enough. You are good enough, you can do this. If you're not great today, you will become a great programmer later on. You just have to put in the time and the effort. Pitfall number 23 is writing code and learning from books and courses, but never really spending time reading open source code. Open source code gives us uh, an incredible resource for free. It allows us to learn from more experienced developers and to modify and experiment with that code. So my suggestion to you is to definitely take advantage of that opportunity. Pitfall number 24 is not getting exposed to other paradigms within the industry. For example, if you are an object-oriented programmer, not learning about functional programming. So yes, you should focus first on one programming language, learn it really well, one particular technology stack and learn it really well. But eventually, as you become more experienced, you will benefit from learning something different, something that a different way of reasoning about programming. For example, learning about functional programming. Finally, pitfall number 25 is not teaching others what you learn about programming. The best way to really learn about something is to teach it to others. As I mentioned before, when you try to teach something to someone, you end up having to clarify your own thoughts about the subject. Because if you don't have clarity of thought on a particular subject, you're gonna have a very hard time conveying the information to others. So there you have it, 25 pitfalls. Oh, and don't forget off by one errors. If you enjoyed this list, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, hit that bell, and until next time.